something I built uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I was redoing my landing page for Air Badge uh, projects, and I built this uh, little animation here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in a little bit. And um, kind of like a pulsing circle with the line moving through it. So I wanted to show you how you can do that. Um, it's mostly just um, HTML, uh, both SVG and CSS. What I'll do is I'll uh, start with an empty REPL here, and we'll create an SVG element. One of the first things you want to do is think about the uh, view box size. And because we have three kind of separate uh, columns, we have the logo on one side, the line in the middle, and the logo on the other side, I'll choose a coordinate system that's divisible by three. That'll just make the math easier. So we'll say zero, zero, and then we'll do 60. Easy, easy to divide by three, right? And 10. And then we'll have uh, an image on the left. So I'll say image, and I'll pull in. I can just hop link right? I have a dev slash logo slash right up. That'll be one logo. And then on the other side, uh, we'll have the fav icon. So we'll do that too. Can't see it because it's white. And in the middle, we'll have a uh, line. So actually, let me just move things into the center of the screen so it's easier to see what's going on. So I'll just drop a style tag in here, and we'll say uh, global body. We'll just we'll just put a flex box on the body just so everything is centered. The content sensor, and um, let's let's put a max width on the SVG. We'll say uh, sixty vertical. And now we can start. Uh, and maybe also would it help us to have a border on here? Just for construction purposes, um, I think I'm going to make this a bit taller. Twenty. Okay, cool. Uh, so now I think we can start styling things up a bit. So this one, let's give it a class left. And um, now this side is actually more than just an image. There should be a circle behind it as well, right? So I'll probably put it in a group. And we can call this group right. That will just make it easy for us to style it. And we can start styling this stuff in here so that we know that the left side, maybe we'll make the max width uh, 20 pixels. And and but it's, we can move it down a little bit. So, I don't know, pixels. Pixels. That looks good. Uh, the line, uh, let's style the line here so we can say that the x1 is 0, the x2 is 20, y1 is 0. And stroke is I don't know, black for now. I'm oh, sorry, I got that wrong. Y2 is zero. And you see that the line is up in the top corner. It's because um, I'd rather use CSS to, to translate it. So we'll do that here. Put a style for line. And we'll translate it uh, 20 pixels on the x axis and maybe 5 pixels. Okay. More? All right. Yeah, that's that's not bad. I might adjust the width of the image, uh, the stripe, just to put a little bit of spacing there, make that 19. And let's make that the line width is a little bit smaller than one, maybe 0 0.75 pixels. Stroke width. And we can make that also dashed, so we can use the uh, stroke uh, dash array. And we can say like uh, maybe two units and then one unit empty. So I think that looks good. Um, probably also put the stroke here, the coloring in the CSS, a little bit better. And instead of using um, instead of using CSS colors, I'll import open crop. So okay, we're getting somewhere now. For the right side, let's think about that for a minute. So the right side, we know we have an image, but we also have um, circles so I'll have probably a circle we'll call it uh, four that'll be the black circle behind uh, the logo let's style that up we say that the core uh, color fill oh, sorry we need a radius here five 
If I see that it's not in the right position, I want it to, to be all over there. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to translate the whole group, put it on the right side. So let's have the right here. Say that translate 40 pixels. I'm just guessing here, 48. Okay, that looks good. Um, you see now the image is in the wrong place, so we'll, we'll adjust that. Um, say that the right image should be in the wrong X pixels. Um, I think also the width could be a bit smaller, maybe um, pixels. Well, that's getting better. There we go. That looks good. Um, and so now we want to have like two kind of bands behind it. So let's let's do that too. So what I'll go back is here. I'll have I'll add some more circles. I'll have a, a circle behind it, which will be called the ring. Actually, we need two rings. So we'll have, uh, let's say, the inner ring, and then we'll have an outer ring. And now let's go and style those. So we'll say that the is the uh, ring, we like inner ring, radius will be seven, eight. Okay, that's cool. Um, then there'll be like the outer ring as well. Will be even bigger. Now, one thing you see right here is that it's cut off. So to fix that, we can we can allow an overflow on the SVG. We'll say uh, overflow visible. Now let's set the colors on here. So I could just set the fill. You know, I can say fill of the inner is um, a violet one, um, and you can make the fill of the outer be I don't know gray. Actually, I'd like to make this some, somewhat transparent. So it would be easier to, instead of using these colors, to use HSL colors, um, because HSL colors allow us to adjust the opacity pretty easily. So just what you do is just pre-import uh, from open props um, the HSL colors. So colors, HSL, min CSS, And then we can adjust these here. This will be color HSL. Wrap that in HSL function. Now we can adjust the transparency. Like I say, it's only forty percent, and we can do the same for the this outer ring. We'll use gray, gray, not five. And it also makes sense to have a, a stroke. And so I'll say I'll do that for all rings. So we'll say ring uh, stroke will be. Uh, so, a bit darker. And we can, we can adjust the size of the stroke a bit. We'll say uh, stroke width 0 0.1 pixels. Go down a bit, maybe. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we can also remove the border now that we have it in good position. Now I think we're ready to uh, start to animate it. Now to animate the uh, the line, there's actually a trick you can do. What we can do is we can kind of like animate the offset of these uh, dashes. And if we do that infinitely, it'll look always like the line's endlessly moving. I'll show you how to do that. What we'll do is we will uh, let's add an animation here, and we'll call it stroke move. It will be uh, infinite and linear. And let's give it a time to maybe one second. And so let's write that uh, the keyframes for this. So this will be called move, and we are going to, go to adjust the stroke dash offset. And we'll offset by minus three pixels. And so there you can see it. It's it's actually uh, moving over. Uh, we can probably make this a little faster if we want. Slide. Oh, there you go. Okay. And so that's how we would animate the uh, the stroke. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, animate these uh, pulsing animations.
Um, my first thought would be to just use uh, pulse, the pulsing animation from open props, right? So let, let's see what happens when we do that. I'll uh, just go in here and say animation, animation pulse. And we see that it's already pulsing. I can do the same on the outer side, the outer ring. But the problem is, is uh, we want to have it more of like the inner and outer pulse at a different rate. So this is not really going to work for us, but we can still use open props to see how they did it. So that's what I'll do now. I'll go to open props uh, site. And if you go down a little bit, you'll see there, there's a link to all the, the implementation of the VARs, including the animation. So if we click on animation CSS, it takes us to GitHub. We can see in here how the animation was built. So we can see animation pulse uses uh, pulse animation. So let's go find that. We're find up here, find pulse. And we see, ah, so all it does is it transforms the scale. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So we could do something similar. We just need to have maybe multiple steps in our, in our keyframes. You know, maybe it'll grow a little bit and then it'll shrink maybe down to 50%, maybe at uh, 30%. So let's go here and do that. So I'll create uh, two, two animations here. We'll have one called um, keyframes, let's say, uh, inner pulse. And we'll have and then we'll have outer pulse. And we can adjust this here to say, uh, I don't know, three seconds outer pulse, and the other one will be inner. And these also need to be infinite. We want it to continue endlessly. All right, so let's look at the inner first. If we go, um, uh, the other thing also we should change is the, the starting condition. Like I drew them um, expanded, but really it should start off uh, scaled down. So, so let's add that here. We'll say that both rings should be scale of 0 0.1 to start. And now we can go here and we can say that, let's say at uh, 0%, it's going to be scale. 0.1, and then at, uh, let's say, 20%, see what happens. Okay, that's not bad. If we do the same thing on the outer, you can just um, hold it a little bit longer at 0 0.1. Maybe we'll hold it till 10%, and then this will be 30. Yeah, I think it could maybe start a little bit further along, maybe 20. This could be 40. And we can also hold this for a bit longer. Maybe hold it at one for. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty good. And I might maybe adjust the line to go a little bit further. Fix the line. And I might also make the outer ring a little bit more transparent. Go down here to the outer ring. We'll say 30. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so uh, there you have it. Uh, as you can see, it's not that difficult to make animations. Uh, we can use open props HSL for uh, opacity. We can also use open props to see how their animations are done. So even if an animation doesn't work for us, we can still adjust pretty easily. So this is a really good uh, reference. In general, all their CSS bars are a great reference. All right, guys, see you on the next one.